Hi, Daniel with DanielParsonsMinistry.com. Today's Life Journal Bible reading plan is for the 26th of April. In the Old Testament, we're going to read 2 Samuel chapter 1, Psalm 140, and then a New Testament, Matthew chapter 13. The New King James Version of the Bible, 2 Samuel chapter 1, the report of Saul's death. Now it came to pass after the death of Saul, when David had returned from the daughter of the I'm sorry, from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and David had stayed two days in Ziglag. On the third day, behold, it happened that a man came from Saul's camp with his clothes torn and dust on his head. So it was when he came to David that he fell to the ground and prostrated himself. And David said to him, Where have you come from? So he said to him, I have escaped from the camp of Israel. Then David said to him, How did the matter go? Please tell me. And he answered, The people have fled from the battle. Many of the people are fallen and dead. And Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead also. <coughs> so David said to the young man who told him, How do you know that Saul and Jonathan, his son, are dead? Then the young man who told him said, As I happened by chance to be on Mount Gilboa, there was Saul leaning on his spear. And indeed, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. Now when he looked behind him, he saw me and called to me, and I answered, <coughs> excuse me, here I am. And he said to me, who are you? So I answered him, I am an Amalekite. He said to me again, please stand over me and kill me, for anguish has come upon me, but my life still remains in me. <clears throat> so I stood over him and killed him because I was sure that he could not live after he had fallen. And I took the crown that was on his head and bracelet, <coughs> excuse me, bracelet that was on his arm and had brought them here to my Lord. Therefore, David took hold of his own clothes and tore them. And so did all the men who were with him. And they mourned and wept and fasted until evening for Saul and for Jonathan, his son, for the people of the Lord and for the house of Israel, because they had fallen by the sword. <clears throat> then David said to the young man who told him, where are you from? And he answered, I am the son of an alien, an Amalekite. So David said to him, how was it you were not afraid to put forth your hand to destroy the Lord's anointed? And David called one of the young men and said, go near and execute him. And he struck him so that he died. So David said to him, your blood is on your own head, for your own mouth has testified against you, saying, I have killed the Lord's anointed, the song of the bow. And David lamented with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan, his son. And he told them to teach the children of Judah the song of the bow. Indeed, it is written in the book of Jasher. <clears throat> the beauty of Israel is slain on your high places. How the mighty have fallen. <coughs> Excuse me. Tell it not in Gath. Proclaim it not in the streets of Ashkelon. Lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. O mountains of Gilboa, let there be no dew nor rain upon you, nor fields of offerings. For the shield of the mighty is cast away there, the shield of Saul, not anointed with oil. From the blood of the slain, from the fat of the, of the mighty, the bow of Jonathan did not turn back. And the sword of Saul did not return empty. <clears throat> Saul and Jonathan were beloved and pleasant in their lives, and in their death they were not divided, and they were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. O daughters of Israel, weep over Saul, who clothed you in scarlet with luxury, who put ornaments of gold on your apparel. How the mighty have fallen in the midst of the battle. Jonathan was slain in your high places. I am distressed for you, my brother Jonathan. You have been very pleasant to me. Your love to me was wonderful, surpassing the love of women. How the mighty have fallen and the weapons of war perished. So now it's time for Psalm 140. As I get that, apologize. Um, <clears throat> sometimes I um, do a lot of recordings and <clears throat> have trouble with my respiratory system. Psalm 140, we go through the Old Testament once in a year and the New Testament twice in a year. Prayer for deliverance from evil men to the chief musician, a Psalm of David. 
Deliver me, O Lord, from evil men. Preserve me from violent men who plan evil things in their hearts. They continually gather together for war. They've sharpened their tongues like a serpent. The poison of, of asp is under their lips. Selah. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Preserve me from violent men who have purpose to make my steps stumble. The proud have hidden a snare for me in cords. They have spread a net by the wayside. They have set traps for me. Selah. I said to the Lord, you are my God. Hear the voice of my supplications, O Lord. O God, the Lord, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant, O Lord, the desires of the wicked. Do not further his wicked scheme, lest they be exalted. Selah. As for the head of those who surround me, let the evil of their lips cover them. Let burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the fire, into deep pits, that they rise not up again. Let not a slanderer be established in the earth. Let evil hunt the violent man to overthrow him. I know that the Lord will man maintain the cause of the afflicted and justice for the poor. Surely the righteous shall give thanks to your name. The upright shall dwell in your presence. And now it's time for Matthew chapter 13. And as I pull that up, we've got hundreds of spiritual messages at danielparsonsministry.com. And my wife, Patricia, is a gourmet vegan chef. She's got hundreds of very delicious, healthy vegan recipes, and you can access all of them on the Healthy Living tab at danielparsonsministry.com. Please comment on your favorite recipes. We enjoy interacting with you. Thank you. The Parable of the Sower, Matthew chapter 13. On the same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they did not have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched, and because they had no root, they withered away, and some fell among thorns. And the thorns sprang up and choked them, but others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The purpose of parables. And the disciples came and said to him, Why do you speak to them in parables? He answered and said to them, Because it has been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it has not been given. For whoever has to him more will be given, and he will have abundance, but whoever does not have, even what he has will be taken away from him. Therefore I speak to them in parables, because seeing they do not see, and hearing they do not hear, nor do they understand. And in them the prophecy of Isaiah is fulfilled, which says, Hearing you will hear, and shall not understand, and seeing you will see, and not perceive. For the hearts of this people have grown dull, their ears are hard of hearing, and their eyes they have closed lest they should see with their eyes and hear with their ears, lest they should understand with their hearts and turn, so that I should heal them. But blessed are your eyes, for they see, and your ears, for they hear. For assuredly I say to you that many prophets and righteous men desire to see what you see and did not see it, and to hear what you hear and did not hear it. The parable of the sower explained. Therefore hear the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom, and does not understand it, then the wicked one comes and snatches away what was sown in his heart. This is he who received seed by the wayside, but he who received the seed on stony places, this is he who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy. Yet he has no root in himself, but endures only for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, immediately he stumbles. Now he who receives seed among the thorns is he who hears the word and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word, and he becomes unfruitful. But he who receives seed on the good ground is he who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and produces some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. The parable of the wheat and the tares. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the grain had sprouted and produced a crop, then the tares also appeared. So the servants of the owner came and said to him, 
Sir, did you not sow good seed in your field? How then does it have tares? He said to them, An enemy has done this. The servant said to him, Do you want us then to go and gather them up? But he said, No, lest while you gather up the tares, you also uproot the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And at the time of harvest, I will say to the reapers, First gather together the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. <clears throat> the parable of the mustard seed. Another parable he put forth to them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed, which a man took and sowed in his field, which indeed is the least of all the seeds, but when it is grown, it is greater than the herbs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and nest in its branches. The parable of the leaven, another parable he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leaven. Prophecy in the parables. All these things Jesus spoke to the multitude in parables, and without a parable he did not speak to them that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter things kept secret from the foundation of the world. The parable of the tares explained. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house. And his disciples came to him, saying, Explain to us the parable of the tares of the field. He answered and said to them, He who sows the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seeds are the sons of the kingdom. But the tares are the sons of the wicked one. The enemy who sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the age, and the reapers are the angels. Therefore, as the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of this age. The Son of Man will send out his angels, and they will gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire. There will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. The parable of the hidden treasure. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. The parable of the pearl of great price. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he had found one, one pearl of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. The parable of the dragnet. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a dragnet that was cast into the sea and gathered some of every kind, which when it was full, they drew to shore. They, and they sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but threw the bad away. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come forth and separate the wicked from among the just and cast them into the furnace of fire. They will be wailing and gnashing of teeth. Jesus said to them, have you understood all these things? They said to him, yes, Lord. Then he said to them, Therefore, every scribe instructed concerning the kingdom of heaven is like a householder who brings out of his treasure things new and old. Jesus rejected at Nazareth. Now it came to pass when Jesus had finished these parables that he departed from there. And when he had come to his own country, he taught them in their synagogues so that they were astonished and said, Where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? Is this not the carpenter's son? Is not his mother called Mary? and his brother James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas, and his sisters, are they not all with us? Where then did this man get all these things? So they were offended at him. But Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his own country and in his own house. Now he did not do many mighty works there because of their unbelief. So that's the end of today's Bible reading, my friends. God bless you until we're together again. Bye for now.